Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Group Chat. Oh, hi, the number one podcast in the world. Hi, welcome to the number one podcast in the world. We have a very, very special guest today that's actually very... Uh, Is it Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> yes, hello. <laughs> um, we have well, a very informative, do ride the bus. <laughs> very informative guest that I think a lot of you will probably uh, learn a lot from. Yes. What do we got? Maytal Mansuri. A cannabis attorney. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Stay well, safe out there, guys. Stay yeah. safe. She and, gives uh, us. And uh, Anand's encouraging to become a drug dealer. He is. And I think there was a little snippet in there of. Uh, she made me too. <laughs> listen closely. <laughs> I don't know. Find out for Read yourself. Read the tea leaves. <laughs> hey, as they say. A lot of people are looking leaves. for business opportunities. Um, there might be a couple in this episode. Yeah. And then, you know, I think the biggest news that everyone's talking about. Bill and Melinda. <laughs> Bill. So sad. We got to jump into that. So, so we're sad. jumping into that right after our interview. And then, of course, we have a lot more to talk about. Also, as you can see, we're just littered with my high. Littered. It's just everywhere. And apparently, according to the law, uh-huh. I can have a my high and drive. Well, it seems a little. Hey, it seems <laughs> great. It's great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and we're surely not promoting it. I wouldn't, we're not not say that. That. I wouldn't say that and then jump right to an attorney. But <laughs> right. we'll actually we'll talk about whether you're safe or not. Okay. Let's let's consult with an attorney first. Right. Okay. Thanks, my high. <laughs> Time for the check. Thank you, my high. I'm wasted. <laughs> Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. I'm excited for this one, guys. Very excited. I want to know if I'm committing any crimes. <laughs> Most likely, yes. <laughs> if um, I drank a, a weed beverage, am I going to jail? And drive? Or just in general? Yeah. I had one the other day. Felt a little sleepy. This might be an illegal podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find out. We need to consult with legal experts. I, we, we, we have a special guest today, uh, Maytal Mansouri. And we got introduced to you by your lovely brother, Gil. Yes. Oh, that's I, your brother. Yes. <laughs> I, I have been I, known as Gil's sister since I was like, you know, 12. Every, oh, you're Gil's sister. Are you, oh. He's a very popular I guy. assume you're younger. Mm-hmm. I thought you were like old. cousins or something. Yeah. Gil's yep. a deceivingly old man. Yep. Gil thinks. <laughs> well, we all put him out. We we all all posted it. his birthday on Instagram. I'm not going to say the number. He seems young. But it was posted. <laughs> he's got good. He did him for a refreshment. He did him for a refreshment. I looked at his Instagram. He looked pretty young. Yeah, I had to guess. Young energy. Wait till you see him out at night. Seems <laughs> like, like he's so, 18. <laughs> funny enough story. Someone was asking me, uh, I forgot who I was talking to. I'm like, oh, I, what does Gil look like? Maybe someone on the team. And so I, looking for pictures of Gil in my phone, yeah. I, all I have is videos of him flicking me off. Yeah. That's like, like what about me dancing out? on the table da- with a shirt off? Like, da- how many of those do you have? D- 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 dancing with bottles <laughs> saying F U D. Oh, man, we're just putting Gil on I'm going to put a whole uh, collage of him insulting me. So, should we say for the listener who Gil is, or should we, now that we just roasted him, should we not? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I don't want to. Okay, Gil's our friend. That works, Gilly, Gilly. You know. yeah, yeah. If you know, you know. He's single. <laughs> You know. Okay. Well, here we go. So let's get to the actual star of the yeah. show here. So, you know, we talk about cannabis here a lot. We have a lot of um, advertisers that are in the cannabis space. And I think, you know, one of the interesting things are like, there's no like understanding of like the laws when it comes to cannabis for people like us. I'm sure cannabis operators know the laws, but we were just talking right before, like you still can't get a bank account if you own you're in the cannabis business. Yeah, it's I mean the federal illegality is really that big barrier to entry there to get a bank account or institutional funding or accept credit cards as a business. Um That's it's absurd. It's incredibly complicated. And bank accounts get shut down all the time and So these people have like cash in safes? Like in what do you safe, do? What's the alternative? Um underground, their mattress. Um, you know, there's some money laundering schemes out there. What's a good one? Since we're an educational podcast, yeah. what's the best? I mean, what's the best way to launder? Is it beverage? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk offline. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we're, so I know there's two types of weed funds, from my understanding. One that touches the plant. One that doesn't touch the plant. That if you don't touch the plant, you can get bank accounts and do all that, right? Right. So how are the people that are investing in? farming and growing, which is like tens of millions of dollars, even funding it. There's 
so many different ways that they might be doing it. Um, so if they're publicly traded in Canada, that's one way you can invest. Um, but can you ha- can you only invest in Canada, or can you bring invest in the U.S.? They um, so the Canadian rules are that they can't be plant touching. It's in um, an area that it's illegal, but there are various workarounds that they've sort of found to to make this work. There's also um, like a real estate investment trust, so people are investing in the real estate as opposed to the actual plant touching. There's, um, you know, there's management companies, there's holding companies, there's intellectual property companies. So there's all these ways that you can kind of invest without actually um, putting money in the plant touching entity. And then there are folks that are willing to invest kind of on the private equity side or smaller scale side in directly into the plant touching um, entity. And they're allowed to like their LPs will let them invest the money into something that federally is not legal like how sometimes it's it's it really varies from you know it's really the risk appetite um of the individuals but you know the large majority at least here in California of cannabis operators of plant touching it's it's smaller and medium sized businesses there are only a few of the ease and the med men and you know those bigger operations um but by and large it's all small and medium so they're Still all doing, um, you know, family, friends, investment. What about, um, you know, y- your background was prior to this, you were, uh, you said you're a federal defender? I was in criminal defense, mostly in cannabis. And so I started, um, you know, I think my first case in 2005 was I was helping um, defend this gentleman. His name is Ed Rosenthal. And he's like kind of an OG in the space. And he was being prosecuted for growing cannabis, but he was deputized by the city of Oakland to go grow for medical patients. But in federal court, he couldn't assert a medical (coughs) defense. And so all the jury heard was that, um, you know, this guy was growing a bunch of weed without any context to the fact that he was growing it for AIDS patients in Oakland. And so that's really like one of the first cases I worked on, which was like seminal case, super interesting. And then as time went on, I just worked on these. Did you win or lose that one? So he (laughs) he was convicted and sentenced to one day. Oh, wow. And the judge sentenced him to one day because the judge knew everything that was happening. But so the way that it works with evidence is that you put everything for the judge and the judge says, here's the rules. You get to get this evidence in, this evidence stays out. So the judge knew all the medical evidence, but the jury didn't. And the judge is the one that does the sentencing. So the judge sentenced him to one day. Wow. And then the jury was was like so angry afterwards that they didn't get any of this information because they knew like something was strange, but they didn't have access to any of this information. And so um, that was really interesting to be a part of. And then the after that case, then the IRS came after him. So that's, you know, a lot of issues for these cannabis businesses and these cannabis operators is, um, you know, the IRS and the tax portion of it is like wow. super heavy. And it, yeah. Um, is it still the case where like technically federal agents could walk into one of these weed shops on Melrose and arrest everybody? That's a great question. Um, I don't want to bore your <laughs> your <laughs> listeners, but give us the yeah. um, so Just say yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> there is no yes or no. Okay. Uh, so there's the there's an amendment in the federal law. It is called the Rohrbacher Farr Amendment. Now it's Blumenfeld too, and it essentially puts like a force field around Got medical it. operators from the feds coming in. Got it. Um, it hasn't really been adapted to the recreational market yet um, at the federal level. However, like the toothpaste is so far out of the tube yeah. that like for the feds to come in and really act on it. But when Trump was first elected and, um, you know, his, his attorney general came out and said that they were going to prosecute in the cannabis businesses and they rolled back a bunch of the um, leniency that had been adopted under Obama. Everyone was really, really nervous about yeah. it, but nothing's happened. And, you know, California, especially the market would be, you know, devastated, obviously, if something that happened. And California's attorney general has said that, you know, they will they will protect against any federal intervention. Yeah. And so it's it's highly unlikely. Yeah. What is the what is the reason that it there's still any like regulation? Because 
you know, as someone that dabbles in alcohol, um, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it would have been appropriate if you said you dabbled in weed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, why I was gonna say, that's why I had the laugh response. <laughs> I drink a lot. Um, <laughs> it's clear alcohol is bad for you. Right. Cigarettes, yep. bad for you. Yep. What is, knowing the historical significance of marijuana, what is the hangup that we even got to a point where marijuana was illegal? What? It's basically racially based. Is, Against what race? Um, mostly African American. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's basically the, you know, the I think the catalyst for it. So, like, if I looked sixty years ago, were African Americans over indexing and smoking marijuana versus white people? Was there that- was a, yeah, there was a stigmatization. So in nineteen thirty five, there was the Marijuana Tax Act, which. Um, originally taxed cannabis for the first time. And then the war on drugs is where it became illegal under Nixon. And there are recordings of Nixon saying, you know, and his, um, you know, his drug czar and other folks saying that they, that the approach is we need to um, criminalize cannabis in order to get, you know, insert sort of, um, you know, racial slur, you know, off the streets. And, you know, it was just sort of a way to um, criminalize being black. So everybody knows that, right? Like Mm -hmm. that's pretty common knowledge at this point. Why is it taking so damn long to now, like, now that we have like, clearly, like you made the comment, like no one ever dies from marijuana, Mm -hmm. but you could name, I mean, more people have probably died from Johnson & Johnson right. or AstraZeneca yeah, than marijuana. One. one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you get over zero. Yeah. Yeah. Johnson & Johnson baby powder, actually, a lot of people died. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, I just like, you know, I know, the, I know the hurdles on the federal legalization that you were mentioning, which we'll get to, but like, I'm just like… But is this not what people talk about when they try to point out how… There's a systemic. There's still systemically racist. But yeah, but like now it's like everybody knows that, right? So can we? I know, but that's why people are like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Can you? Like this started in a racist way, and it's still. But there. we're in California, and we're in Los Angeles. Like this conversation is going a certain way, but if you're in um, Idaho, it's going a completely different direction. So you know? what are what are the steps yeah, that yeah. it takes for marijuana to get federally legal? Um, it it so it's actually everyone always asks. Oh, is Biden going to make a difference? Is Trump going to make a difference? The president really doesn't have that much of an impact. It's really Congress, and so Congress has to take steps. And there's the Safe Banking Act, and previously there was the More Act. And banking looks like it's going to be the first thing that's going to kind of get approved. Um, and just pass it. What? You're going to like pass banking, but, but it's still federally. And illegal. by the way, all the states love collecting all the tax revenue, right. but you won't give them a bank. So <laughs> is this because like people are too scared to that they're voters? It's still too risky for their voters? I think voters? it's stigma. I think it's just generational stigma. You know, it's like there was reefer madness and, you know, it's just so embedded in the culture, the idea of the stoner. And, you know, it's kind of got this like negative, dirty, yeah. negative association. And, yeah you know, old white men are not doing it. You know, eh, they well, are. Yeah. Not to the degree that they might be <laughs> drinking like, like a scotch and, yeah, or, you know. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. They're up to yeah. some other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's just, they're not doing it as much as, or haven't been doing it as long. And there's just this stigma attached to it. And I think it's just going to take a little time for that to be removed. And then there's just like, you know, there's all this fear mongering, like, you know, like um, smoking while driving. Okay, well, I saw somebody mention like, well, I'm not going to vote in favor of decriminalization federally until there's a test to prove if you're stoned while driving. It's like just completely illogical and and so removed from from reality. It's, Why know. is that illogical though? Because there's just a part of me that's like, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's illogical one because they're, the the testing for it is is so far from being developed yeah. and finalized. Also, there's not even proof that driving while high is impairment. Yeah. It, you know, there is there are studies that some you know like you can't necessarily make a decision a complicated decision if you're in an intersection and like trying to make that decision. It might take you longer. Yeah. But as compared to alcohol or texting when driving, like it's 
Texting is not. Texting's bad. But you also right. can't tell, like, if I load up on Vicodin and go for a cruise, you can't test me for that either. Right, right? that's yeah. right. So that's kind of my, you it's know. A big, it's a hot topic in the country. Yeah. Opioids. If you're loaded up on a bunch of painkillers, right. you can't yeah. test that either. And so yeah. on the spectrum of things, I find these to be excuses as to why we can't just move progress yeah. forward. And so what about the decriminalization part? Like, what are we going to do with all these people that have been locked up? So, I mean, here in California, what we did was it was just immediate, like not immediate. I shouldn't say that. It wasn't immediate, but it was expungement and release. You know, I was in court the day after Prop 64 passed and like just like saw people actually like physically just Walking out. Walking out, which was just very cool. And I actually got to argue a case on that day to get a guy out, which was just so cool. Um, And these people were just arrested for like having a joint in their pocket or something. I mean, my guy was on sales, um, but some of them might have been possession. You know, the way that, you know, also like if you look at some of these, you know, recent sort of like police shootings and brutality, the way they stop them is usually like weed related. So it's like this like, Really bad. Um, it's a gateway spiral. Yeah, yeah, arrest. Gateway arrest. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Gateway yeah. Drive, yeah. Weed on him. And yeah. that's that was the point. That was the whole impetus for criminalizing it. Yeah. Because like, oh, you have a joint and you can smell it and, and whatever. Let me search you. Let me arrest you. And then, yeah. you know, other things. Wow. And then the rest we just have to rely on Kim Kardashian to set right. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Just curious. The people's champ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The people's champ. Um, I'm also curious Go just because Kim. I think it's interesting. Like we um we get accused, probably rightfully so, of like speaking from a bubble a lot here mm-hmm. on this podcast. Right. So the how you said that the conversation would go differently in Idaho, how how so do you think? Like what's the attitude there that we're not Idaho just introduced a constitutional amendment to their state constitution to ban marijuana. They went the other way? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. You know, it's funny. There's a lot of Silicon Valley folks that moved to Idaho during the pandemic. There's some like water area that all these little engineering nerds yeah. moved. I think they like potatoes. <laughs> a lot of those engineers yeah. are vegetarian. They just want like plentiful potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they all smoke weed and microdose. do a shit well, ton of acid and a lot of molly. Like, <laughs> we're getting a lot of Californianization <laughs> across the red state. Yeah. So that's kind of good. But the conversation is, you know, it's highly sort of irrational in my opinion, but it's just, it's illegal. It's dangerous. You do know, they ban the alcohol stigma. too? Hell, Guns? what? Mm. Cigarettes? No, no you're talking about. Get you rid know, of the what they're grass. doing in their truck is they've got a Miller Light, a shotgun. Right. Yeah. Just fucking that's, like, don't bring I mean, that that's my father. Yeah. My father-in-law, 100%. It's like he's got a million guns, yeah. right? You know, all this alcohol. But for him, like, talking about weed, it's, like, crazy. Like, I think I smoked in front of him once, and he was just, like, looking at me. Like, it's the you biggest, know, funny. like, it's almost like a, like a joke at this point. Yeah. Like, the biggest, like, experiment on just human brain flaws. You know, I I think that's your, to your point is a systemic racism because these people grew up that, oh, black people did uh, smoke marijuana and they, they're, they're bad. And, and that just, they can't erase that in their head. And I think it's even subconscious. I don't think they even recognize that that's what's happening. Yeah. Because if I sort of bring that up, it's like, that's a crazy assertion. That's not what's happening. But I've heard yeah. that Nixon tape <laughs> where have. he says that. Well, that's the yeah. problem. Is like that, you have the guy on tape. Yeah. <laughs> like the guy who started the war on drugs yeah. has said that that's why he did it. Yes. And, and you're that, like, well, that's crazy. That yeah. reinforces the old racist. Like, yeah, I knew I was right. Yeah. Nixon yeah. said it. <laughs> something checked out. <laughs> Damn it, man. Oh, my God. But yeah, I mean, so what's your business today? So are you mainly... Um, Working with um, brands in the cannabis space, um, like how how do you practice law today? We represent all verticals in the industry, so manufacturers, retailers, distributors, testing labs, okay. um, brands, everybody, and um, you know we assist with the licensing, the regulatory compliance, which is quite robust and complicated. So even if you've been in this space for a certain amount of time or what have you, the laws are changing all the time and compliance is such a challenge. So we oh. assist with that. And um, and then also there's a lot of M&A activity. So a lot of um, buying and selling of licenses, cannabis business. So we assist with that. We do the transactional paperwork, the due diligence on the license, if that's appropriate. Nice. We do licensing, IP, um, you know, we kind of, we call ourselves a full service cannabis and hemp 
business law firm. So, you know, when we have guests on, I usually ask for a discount code when, when a brand comes on. Yeah. So can, can people get a discount? Free legal advice. <laughs> you get one question. You, you get one hour free. free. You you get one it's like that um, Snoopy episode. Have you ever seen that Snoopy episode no, where one? Lucy is sitting and she's got like the stand, the lemonade stand, like ask your questions. Yeah. I'll answer yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Use code group chat. Um, but how? what's the best way for people interested to contact you? Uh, just, uh, through our website, manzurilaw.com. Um, and, uh, what's your, you had a good Instagram handle. What was it? It's 420 attorneys. I like Ooh, it. That's good. Yeah. Like yeah. That's we a started that a while ago. Yeah. I know we, I started it so long ago and, um, and yeah, it's, it's fun. It's kind of as a lawyer, it's the only time we get to have a little bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, it's good I have content. a question. It's like fun. Well, welcome in Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. What happened to like, so I know people who still buy marijuana from like the local drug dealer still uh-huh. right like they so just thrill. they just it's like uh, people who shoot film photography yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> people like what are you doing yeah. like you know yeah it's on like phone. I prefer vinyl and <laughs> yeah. a, a drug dealer yeah so That's like so why like one why do those people exist two <laughs> do you do you still work with people like that so there's the there's two different there's like Three different demographics there. There's the fully licensed retailer, right? Yeah. You walk in. When you go in there as a consumer, you're paying top dollar. Yeah. You know, 70% of what you're paying is taxes. And so you're going to pay probably double or more. So the more. premium is high. Wow. Way okay, higher. Well, that just explained it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> no, so it's expensive. The, yeah, 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 no, definitely yeah, the expensive. unlicensed shop is going to be much cheaper. And then, you, you know, if you've got like your homie who's just growing in the closet, he's got no... <laughs> You know, commercial real estate to pay. Like he's yeah. got no bills. So yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we the do. Yeah. It's never been more profitable to be a drug dealer because the criminalization is so right. much less. Yeah. So if you get caught with a dime bag and you're under market by like fifty yeah. percent, you're gonna crush your business, your chance of going to jail is so much less. Yeah. Well, there you go. We're here to spawn <laughs> entrepreneurship. So <laughs> Go start something. Because, for instance, like, this is so absurd to me. Like, I know people that deliver for like weed companies and they're just drug dealers. I mean, they're just, you're driving (laughs) all around town with your car full of weed and it's totally legal. Right. And like, it's just, that's the craziest thought. So, if you just. Uber, right? Uber wants to join the weed game, they they said. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I know a lot of drug dealers now that like it's just a normal gig. But are they drug dealers or are they? I mean, no, they're, not, they're, they're not getting. It's the, legal. It's legal. Yeah, well, but yeah. the the guys we're talking about, poor guys, aren't getting the margin. No. No. Right. <laughs> if it, but no. But I no. Well, <laughs> I think I know what you're saying. But the point is, yeah. I know people that just deliver for whatever name insert retailer. Yeah, and and they also sell drugs. No, 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 no. I'm talking about... He's just calling them drug dealers. I just don't know if I should say his name or not. But our, yeah. I know exactly. <laughs> our boy yeah. just delivers the, completely legally. And all he does is drives around all day with a car full of weed. Yeah. And, and like people make orders and he goes and delivers it. And all that I'm saying is not so long ago, that was like the most criminal thing. Yeah. That was a corner do. boy. Yeah, absolutely. The equivalent of a corner boy. Yeah. Absolutely. Like if anyone's seen The Wire, the... Where, yeah. And now it's like a... Skinny white dude in a Civic. Yeah. Just like, well, just, it's like being an Uber driver. How I mean, much we do you need? Yeah. It's incredible. There's still a lot of like um, unlicensed delivery companies that are doing exactly that, but they don't have licenses. So yeah. they do still get in trouble. Got yeah. It. That's more what Anand was originally referring yeah. to. He's, yeah. he's saying you should go do that. Be business. fully integrated. Grow your weed. Get in your car. <laughs> yep. Back Drive it around. Up, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do the old like, the hey, do you yeah. need any weed? Yeah, <laughs> old yeah, because no, the school. penalties are very low, as you're saying. Yeah. Like, you know, um, or even better, ship it across the country, and you're gonna make triple. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and there's your uh, discount. <laughs> That's your discount offer. Value, you. value. I mean, <laughs> anyone who's driven around LA, there's homeless tents everywhere. There's drugs everywhere. Yeah. And no one's getting stopped. No. I've yeah. seen people with syringes outside of our building. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, if Medical. they're able to do it. Yeah. Medical. It is becoming, I've noticed it's in the last couple of years, it's been way more accepted to just like smoke a joint outside. 
Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, nobody really cares anymore. No, I mean, like, so on Sunday, my mom stayed with us and we picked up food from a spot on a sugar taco on Melrose. And there's a line. So we put our order and we're walking around. Mom's like, very distinct smell on this street. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, every single person is smoking weed. She's like, there's a lot of skunks around this <laughs> area. <laughs> skunks. <laughs> Okay. Amazing. Well, good thank stuff. you for coming. Yeah, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me, you guys. So yeah. much fun. A lot, a lot of good information here. So, yes. manzurilaw.com. Yes. We're okay. going to link everything in the bio. So. Put, you'll put it in the notes? Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Stay out of Idaho. That's the lesson we learned today. <laughs> yeah, if you're oh, driving yeah. through in Idaho with a joint. They're going oh, backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for people who don't uh, use social, how do you spell Missouri Law? Oh, uh... M is Mary, A, N is a Nancy, Z is in Zebra, U R I Law L A W dot com. Yeah, might some dude just clients high should be like, like N is a Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> yeah, if you can't catch it, then you probably don't want to call us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you, don't, you don't want to represent a dummy. Yeah, yeah. Just set that bar. <laughs> yeah. All right, good stuff. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, ready for news? Yeah. Is Bill out here? <laughs> Smashing? <laughs> I mean, this is blockbuster. What? I, I, <laughs> what? After 27 years? This is like when I remember the equivalent of this news being shared is when Lakers got LeBron or Shaq came to the Lakers. <laughs> this was that kind of bombshell of news. Yeah. Where every, I mean, the amount of people that were like, oh my God, oh my God. It, it oh was my. in every text thread within five minutes of that tweet coming out. Yes. What was the initial... Okay, so Bill and Melinda Gates are getting divorced after 27 years of marriage. They no longer see a way that they can move forward together. Yeah. Maybe because you're 80. <laughs> you're not supposed to be moving forward and doing it. What are move you going to spice it up? Yeah, move back. <laughs> what the hell? What was Don't interesting? handle polio, man. That's how you move forward. Honestly, I was devastated. <clears throat> devastated? I, yeah. Devastated? I just... <laughs> I, I had... You know, I was. I was, I was very surprised because I was actually with Josh when we were talking about it. And Josh was like... Is there anything sacred anymore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You I mean, ship it just, us all up and then get divorced. Who well, controls the chips? Well, here's the thing: is she <laughs> filed for divorce, not him? Ooh, uh -oh, maybe she he got filed. Caught, caught with his hand in the cookie jar. processor drawer. Exactly. And so <laughs> we have her filing for divorce. Twenty-seven years of marriage, three kids. Obviously, they are richer than piss. Yep. They have the most important foundation on earth. On earth. Like, why get, I, I honestly, I don't even know why you get divorced. What I don't get is why not just move on, stay together and have an array, uh, you know, yeah. have a setup. Uh, you know what my, what Haley was saying? She was like, can you imagine how annoying he is? <laughs> Oh my God, he's oh, got to be the most this is what happens. <laughs> All the you know the women team up on the women's side. The guys are like, oh, no so, prenups. Yeah, if she <laughs> filed, no you know, prenups. <laughs> there's actually been no rumors, official rumors of what's happened. Well, let's start one. But there has been rumors that he was flying on Epstein's plane back yes. in the day. So there's that's not a rumor. That. That's a fact. Okay. But I guess the argument against having the setup is what if they get caught. Melinda is just like, I want to move on and be with someone else. Yeah. That has to be the case. That has to be the case. Mackenzie Bezos married a school teacher. Yeah. She's like, I need to scoop me up a high school teacher. Yeah, that has to be the case. <laughs> it just seems like Mackenzie Bezos was not. At, she like, was Bill and Melinda Gates is like a thing. Mm -hmm. That's like, a part of Mackenzie. No one really. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure she did her part, but I'm just saying. Like the no, Bill and Melinda right. Gates You know Foundation. how many 60 minutes specials have been Bill and Melinda flying around the world in African That's India? That's a brand. I mean, they did a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I mean, so that, to me, that's the only reason is they were like, legitimately, we want to start, maybe someone met someone, right? I mean, because why not? I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I want to speculate, you know, you're not supposed to speculate, but well, I want to speculate. Well, this one, you have to, you have no choice. Yeah, you have to speculate. That's the whole point of this podcast. Yeah, it's, it's, a lot it's of speculation. You're telling me when you heard LeBron was going to Miami, you didn't start speculating? <laughs> yeah, I was a lot of speculating. So I think. <laughs> I think um, I, I just have a feeling Bill did something. Wow. I don't think I just oh. unless during a pandemic, isn't he the hygiene guy? He was probably vaccinated like before this thing even came <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, he invented he was vaccinated <laughs> six months out there in Miami deep. Yeah. Um so now understanding like I mean, I just for her to file to me was the big thing. 
Um, but the good news is I don't think this is going to be like some epic battle because they're just giving away their money anyway. Yeah, what, what are you battling over? Yeah. But Will Melinda I, the have more money dollars? than uh, McKenzie? I think when Jeff and McKenzie got divorced, they were wor- worth around the same. Yeah. But then obviously Bezos is worth a lot more now. Um, and, and you know, one of the things that Bill, Bill Gates had always said, or Bill and Melinda Gates had always said, like they weren't going to leave much money for their children because they're just like this amount of wealth is just ridiculous. Yeah. So the rumored amount that each of their children is getting, I think they need to update the amount. It's kind of a joke. What is it? Ten million each. What? You gotta update it. They gotta give the- inflation inflation adjusted at least. Come on. Yeah, I mean, ten million, they gotta work still. They yeah. can't even live in Seattle. They can't even inherit the houses. No. They can't pay the tax. They can't live in the pool house. <laughs> yeah. What a man. Ten million is a joke. I mean, if I'm what's also fascinating is how young they still are. Well, Melinda's only 56. Melinda's 56. Bill's Bill? 65. But it feels like they've been in our lives my entire life. They have been. Microsoft, he was yeah, a billionaire in the 80s, yeah. 80s. So they got married late. I mean, 27 years. Yeah. Bill was 40 something. Uh, so 30. do you think Bezos basically just kind of set the tone? Just <laughs> trailblazing for I do. old I billionaires. Do. Yeah. And everyone's like, hey, out. Bezos did it. You see old Jeff on a yacht with Jay Z and a smoking new Latina. You're like, <laughs> Maybe I can't see growing together anymore. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying, bro. I think I think it's like what they say like dating apps did to like relationships. I think Jeff did that to billionaires. Jeff, yeah, yeah revolution. There's because a round you know two available now. Because th- who talks bad about Jeff Bezos except for t- people? And he got it the worst. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Besides you guys. I mean, That's who talks I, bad I, I would say Jeff Bezos. Bezos is one of the most admired people in the world. 100%. Well, yeah. It's Elon it's, Musk and Jeff Bezos. Yeah, but of course, you're going to also be one of the most hated. Of course. Yeah. But I'm just saying, there's a big portion of the population yeah, you're right. that idolizes right. They're on my uh, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Right. And, and look, I don't <laughs> think that this is the thing, the bigger thing if you're Bill is. I don't think anything really stuck around from the Lauren Sanchez debacle. Nothing. And, and think about how bad he got it. He had dick pics. Selfies with his shirt off. I mean, we had three months <laughs> dedicated to Jeff Bezos. Yes. And now he's a show. hero again. Now he's a hero. <laughs> yeah. He's a trailblazer. He's a trailblazer. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think it's how possible. How many guys are waking up this weekend who are billionaires and be like, ah, me too, fuck yeah. it. They're like, I want to be like Jeff. But well, it's, at the rate of fucking Doge a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but not I mean, Doge millionaires. We're talking about billionaires. Doge millionaires. Oh, billionaires. Oh, Doge okay, not, millionaires not, yeah. Yeah. Breaking up with their girlfriends <laughs> in their studio yeah, like, yeah. I'm Yo, getting a one-bedroom bitch. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's basically now at Yellowstone they should give you a house a divorce attorney yeah. <laughs> and the side piece yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting because like yeah what if it was Melinda and she was the one because she's the one filing maybe she's like like you said she found someone she's like this guy's annoying as fuck also with his thing probably another fucking his microchips yeah. I don't want to deal with this guy probably another high school <laughs> teacher or something <laughs> No. That's what I'm saying. I mean, Mackenzie moved on smoothly. Smoothly. Right to a high She's school happy, teacher. It seems like. Maybe she went to I college. Mean, I, th- I bet you if you went to the Bezos household Christmas celebration, it's probably pretty happy. I bet it is. I bet Bill saw that. He's like, ah. Maybe Bill he probably was, called Jeff Bill and said, probably what's invi- like at Christmas now? Just Do you think Bill <laughs> hopped over to the other island in Seattle, looked at Jeff's family, he was like, ah. <laughs> I think it's possible. I think that the same way you're realizing that in this day and age at 50, 60 years old, you can start a business. It's never too late. I think you can also take another shot at marriage with a hot young Latina. <laughs> <laughs> and you still have a shot to be on that yacht with Jay-Z. Yes. Yeah. And you can probably like amicably have everyone together. I mean, look, I'm sure, like you guys said, I'm sure Jeff and Mackenzie are together around each other. For sure. They have to be, right? They have yeah. kids. Bill and Melinda, this is my question though. What happens? Is this the best news for viruses that's happened in world history? (laughs) Because now the two main people who focus on them are split up. Are they still focusing on? I think it's pretty devastating what's going to happen to the charitable world. Because if for some reason it's a bit rocky, it's going to slow down a lot of money that's being deployed by this foundation. I think it's it's a big deal. Maybe it was rocky because they weren't happy now that they're free and separate. Maybe Melinda was like, COVID wouldn't have happened if I didn't have this fucking annoying guy with me all the time. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Think weaken it up. <laughs> just always thinking. <laughs> always thinking. Stop Why thinking, can't we just Bill. have dinner? <laughs> Why are you Why, thinking? Why are you thinking about dinner? <laughs> just eat. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, I, Bill. This is interesting, man. I, I feel like, um, I do feel like, maybe I'm wrong here. It seems to me like in the past, 
at this age, you would have just stayed together. I, I, that's what I don't get. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, because I think you, I think in all seriousness, you see both of them. There's another life to be had. Like Jeff and Mackenzie, both. Jeff Bezos is not engaged, is he? No, but Mackenzie's married. Yeah. So she's now found happiness and moved on. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not do that? I mean, and I get it. Melinda's only 56 years old. She's really young. They have three ki- three pretty much grown kids. You know they're going to live to like 120. Easy. <laughs> they got, they're only halfway through life. <laughs> yeah. So they're probably like, I got 60, 70 more years. a midlife crisis. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> Bill probably was thinking about it. He's like, I'm probably going to live into 140, 150. Yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I, his best friend, uh, Warren Buffett, got remarried on his 76th birthday. Wow. Warren Buffett did the same dance? But no, his wife died. Oh, okay. okay. Oh. R.I.P. But it was a, it was a, it was a long time between the death okay. of his wife and the remarriage. Yes. I think look the same way we were talking to Taylor about now you can work remote. You can, I think options are open. Yeah. And I think it's never too late to get divorced in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I just think they have so there was just so much of a life built. They're so like iconic. I agree. Like they Bill and Melinda Gates, the damn foundation is their name. I mean, literally the biggest name in all of like. Charity. Charity is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yeah. I mean, they got all those people that give away their money. I wonder if they're calling me like, ah! Hey, just wondering. Uh, just wondering. Uh, where Warren's like, here? Uh, <laughs> can I take back that $90 billion? <laughs> I'm so curious, man. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, I'm sure we'll… There has to be some hot gossip that comes out of this. Bill spotted. Yeah. The Bill spotted, especially with summer approaching. Yeah. Like, if Bill goes on like a boys trip with Bezos… Yeah. On the boat. I saw the, on the Geffen's vi- boat. Yeah. That's the Doesn't move, Bill right? Like you get divorced. Boat? You're a billionaire. You get divorced. Yeah. You, you go, go on Geffen's, Geffen's boat. boat. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing that I saw that was interesting was, you know, the famous Microsoft video with Bomber and… Uh, the memes and, are amazing. And they're like, when mm. uh, Bill hits the boys, let's go to Miami. That's good. <laughs> That's a good meme for right now. Yeah. Oh, my God. Or vaccinated women in your area. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw that one. Oh, yeah. Bill searching for vaccinated women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, we'll see what okay. happens. All right. Uh, you guys want to talk about Mr. Beast? Yeah, the reason why I want to talk about it, I'm in the article. You're in the article? I, I'm quoted. You made, This is the New York Times? New York yeah. Times. Wow. Okay, so the article is Mr. Beast, who's 22 years old, which is insanity. I did not know he was that young. He doesn't even look 22. I'm not making fun of him, but the guy has like a good amount of facial hair. Yeah. You know, he looks like a little older. He is a YouTube uh, titan. Yep. And, uh, you know, this article is about how he's really trying to like uh, transition to the business world and take over. Yeah, I mean, what do you say? My, my uh, I'll quote myself. He's a beast. D. Murphy. <laughs> he's, he's a beast. Don't forget the Mister. <laughs> <laughs> D. Murphy. <laughs> no, I I talked to so Taylor Lorenz wrote this article, and my friend uh, Ray hooked us up, and we she was just having a conversation about Mister Beast, and I was saying that like this um, new generation of creators, like the Jake Pauls, Logan Pauls, and even Mister Beast, mm-hmm. they don't feel like they have any barriers. Yep. They can do whatever they want. And so my quote was, he believes that you can do whatever you want in today's environment. And then you're going to see this prol- proliferation of creators creating this very disruptive businesses. Yep. Mr. Beast. Good quote. C- powerful quote That's there. That's why people listen. And mm-hmm. and they, uh, in, the, in the New York Times, by the way. By the way. Welcome <laughs> to group chat. <laughs> um, I think the like what he did with the food delivery, I, I believe we talked about it, mm-hmm. where he pretty much launched through Ghost Kitchens 400 locations. Which across is a the staggering country. number. Insane. Yeah. I don't care if it's Ghost Kitchens or not, that there's enough demand for 400 burger locations. Yeah. And, and the fact that yeah. like… They sold a million burgers today. Well, that's the thing a about million? these social yeah. media stars. is like it's not tied to any one territory. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're on every phone. Yeah. This guy is massive on YouTube. Yeah. And I think when you look at like… What's his uh, gimmick? How did he get so big? Give away crazy amounts of money. And cars and houses. And yeah, like, like every what, single video is something crazier. That is it he'll fuckery just, or no? It's insane. No. Like it's literally like… Put your hand know, on like that a, boat. Last one to take their hand off the boat gets to keep the boat. First, last one to stay in the house gets the house. So is it like a grocery hack? store, but everything's free. Is it like the ultimate growth hack on YouTube? Apparently what he did and what everyone like gives him super credit for is like he obsessed over what makes YouTube videos work. Like what at what moment the title, at what moment the engagement, whatever. And then he just went overboard. Okay, look, remember when we did um, we did a contest once for Tilly's? 
where we were supposed to give away some sort of sweepstakes. And D actually came up with the idea, why don't we just give away $25,000 cash? Why not just get to the point? Take all the money we would have spent on the trip to go to Supercross and just give it away, right? Yep. He took that on like steroids <laughs> yeah. and was just like, okay, I'll just be insane about the stuff that I'm giving away. He claims that for the first like couple years, every single dollar he made was spent giving away to people for the next video. And he just became like the biggest thing. His videos get like 40 million views yes, or something he's like, like yeah. absurd. Top three on the platform. And so I think, like yeah, and the guy's 22 years old. He's got the food thing going. He's investing. He's got his creation of the content that he's creating. It's like, it's an empire. It's an empire, yeah. It's an empire. And like, I think the interesting thing is with these young creators, like if you had told like a 22-year-old musician, they'd be like, I tour, like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I tour, I write an album. That's how I make money. Yeah, these kids, you they like I, I. Why I love Jake and Logan Paul too is they just their YouTube careers were effectively dead, yeah. and then they went and said, "I'm just gonna go fight people." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. And now I mean, they're the biggest fighters in the world. Yeah. yeah, I mean they weren't even really dead. They were just like they just spiraled it off into something else again. I, I, back I, to the idea I heard, that you can do anything. But I did. From what I heard, the revenue was down. We had the revenue down because they couldn't generate any ad sets because yeah. everything was demonetized. Yeah. Well, no, no, but they were like hated. They were like at the bottom of the bottom. Yeah. Four million plays in a video is not at I the know, bottom. I know, but you can't monetize yeah, that. Yeah, but what we're yes, saying can here, do is like they, they sort of like, they sort of hit a wall. Sure. Like it right. was like vlog okay, every day, vlog right. every day, vlog every day. Oh my God, right. everyone hates us. We're demonetized. We can't sure. get any brand deals. Right. I'm telling you that when you're sitting at home, that feeling is it's over. Yeah. I hit a wall. I right. can't make any money sure. anymore. So instead, they're like, fuck That's it. I'm a... Boxer now. Singer, rapper, boxer. Right. I yeah. mean, Logan Paul has like a whole album. Yeah. Like when I went there to- I've listened to some music. I've watched oh, yeah. his videos. Oh, yeah. When I went there, they had a whole studio. And he's like, yeah, I'm working on an album. Like he literally <laughs> just like, I don't know. I'm a <laughs> this. I'm going to do whatever I want. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, but I think there are a few people in the creator space that are truly like beasts. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Don't forget the Mr. Um, <laughs> and I think Mr. Beast is, is like, you know, like in the five. Like, there's probably five. He's in it's, it's unbelievable. My only bone to pick is he says he really wants to be Elon one day. He could be as famous as Elon, but yeah, Elon gonna... created PayPal, reinvented it. Reinvented that was my shows. argument with uh, Taylor. Yeah. You know, it was like, you're still different. Yeah. You it's... know, you still got... V v what? What's the Ethereum guy's name? Vitalik. Yeah. Vitalik. Yeah. You know, he's the next Elon, maybe. Yeah. Yes, Vitalik can be the next Elon. Mr. Beast is 22. Just don't throw Elon's name around like that, right, Pete? Okay. Yeah. Peter, Goddamn he's... right. What's... You're still Team Portnoy? In what? Well, we already explained didn't you that choose... context. But didn't you choose a side? Uh, he chose Bezos. Yes. No, no, not Bezos. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you did choose Bezos. What? But in the debate between Elon and Portnoy, didn't you yeah. choose up with Portnoy? No. Well, I originally chose Elon, and then I went back to Portnoy. Yeah. So now that Saturday's coming around, how you feeling? Back to Elon. Got it. Different context, though. This is for the Doge community. So it could change. Not daily. for the Bitcoin community. Oh, so the original one was Bitcoin. Got it. Got it. This okay. is Doge now. Different story. Doge father. Okay, well, listen. Everyone pay attention to Mr. Beast. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, at 22, like, what is this guy going to do? What's he going to do when he's 42? <laughs> What's really funny is he, there's some interview he does on a podcast where he talks about the tax paying taxes every year because it's gnarly. There's like, you know, you're sick and he's giving so much stuff away and like goes into detail trying to figure out how gnarly his yearly taxes are. Yeah. He's yeah, giving sure. so much away. Yeah. That's incredible. Okay. All right. Um, next up, Pete, you know, like we were about to start recording a second ago and Pete's like, hold on and just like left the room. While he was on the phone. While he was on the phone, right? And so I don't know if he's talking to his broker or like what's happening. <laughs> but ever since you know, the last 24 hours where Do Dogecoin is just shot through the roof, Pete has been acting a little different. And I just want to point out to all of our listeners, because we're all going to hold him accountable because there's no way out of this. He promised us that at $1, he's getting a Dogecoin tattoo. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're at 60 cents. Uh, currently right now, 54. But it tipped okay. at 60. So I'll start more. looking at availabilities. Because I think, I mean, look, what? Is Saturday Night Live going to push it over the edge? The dog father? The Doge father? He's, he's, he's hearing the rumors on the street that everyone's selling on Saturday. Everyone's selling. What kind of a celebration is that? Well, these are just some squares down at USC. 
a fucking you know alumni those, you know, see, down at USC. You know how those stupid college grads are, right? <laughs> yeah. see? Stupid ass. See, look, now that he's rich. <laughs> How'd you I came from humble beginnings. They came from privilege. Clowning on. Oh, my God. <laughs> How'd you meet these USC folks? Who are uh, they? You know, friends of friends of friends. And they're telling you... The uh, SNL Saturday. A word on the street is yeah, they're just pumping and dumping. They're not well, too hot. What's like Reddit saying? That's where the truth is, right? I mean, it's hot until um, one dollar, and then <laughs> so one dollar falls off. A no, one dollar, and then it's you can sell up to ten percent, but you hodl, so the value stays. So that's can the you rule? explain what hodl is to the group? You hold. What does it stand for? Do you know, where, do you know the acronym stands for? Nope, don't care. <laughs> Holding it, on, dear life. This is how crazy like uh, <laughs> this culture is. Is it originated from like a, uh, a, a a newsletter blast out to a bunch of people f- f- from this guy? I don't know the details, and he right. just misspelled hold. Yeah. And so now yes. the word hodl is from famous. like ten years ago. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of history for you. Yeah, thanks. A little bit of finance history. Really appreciate Ooh, that. It was as I grow and grow my knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the finance market. <laughs> Someone the other day was like, Dior, Dior. And I was like, what the fuck? You're spelling Kristen Dior wrong? And then I had to Google it. It's do your own research. D-Y-O-R. <laughs> wow. That's good. It's he was incredible. like, Dior, Dior. I Pete's, was like, okay, Pete's shit. a big Dior. Um, but yeah, I mean, crypto's going fucking nuts. Doge is going crazy. Ethereum's going batshit crazy. Bitcoin's oh, yeah. kind of dead. Ethereum's going batshit. Uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin have always kind of tracked. Yeah. This, Not anymore. It's actually good that these things don't track each other. I think they need to trade independent. Yeah. 100%. I'm a big Vitalik guy, if you can't tell. Yeah. I like Vitalik. Yeah. Um, That's what my next big investment will be into Ethereum. Okay. I'm also oh. going to be staking it. Uh, I've already signed up on Coinbase. Okay. So it's staking it at 6%. And they haven't approved anyone for staking yet on Coinbase. Some yet. people got early no. approval. Did they? I have yeah. one friend that did. Wow. And I was one of them. You got it? No. Yes. yes, I'm on Coinbase. I just signed up this morning going to Ethereum 2. I'm getting 6%. It's all signed up. I'm there. Look at this oh, guy. Oh, wow. You fucking cocksucker. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the fucking man Did now? <laughs> yeah. We got to keep an eye on this guy. I don't know. I got an email this morning and said, you're approved. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, I'm just saying, you might want to start looking for new video guys. Yeah. <laughs> Seems a little fishy. You can apply it. See how Saturday goes. <laughs> um, okay. Next up, let's do a bag report. Yeah. Let's do a quick bag report. I mean, people love the bag talk. Yeah. Uh, just a quick check-in on the bags. Apple, the king of bags. I would say, do they have the most liquid bags? Yeah. Okay. So the holder of the most liquid bags. Um Makes billions of dollars off of their freaking dongles. That dongle bag is real. Remember when dongles first started and it was like, oh, fucking dongle. Like, I need a dongle for this, a dongle for that. It's a billion dollar business. It, this is, you know, everyone, you know, including Anand, wants to knock Timmy Cook. Yeah, you're worried about redesigning the iPhone. All you need is a dongle. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, what is his responsibility? Tim Cook's. Just make money, right? He's not McDonald's. responsible to... You know what your responsibility is? Put a damn USB port on the side of your fucking computers. Well, he doesn't need to because uh, dongles, uh, in twenty by 2027, they think all the entire dongle market... <laughs> <laughs> Got it. ...is $25 billion. Dongles. But am I not wrong in thinking that that is a completely made up... They're like forcing all- us into the dongle business. Yeah. Yeah. This is what Steve Jobs would do. You know, Steve Jobs was trying to innovate. Tim Tim Cook goes, you know what? Get rid of all these holes in there. Nothing buy dongles. They want to stick in this hole, you're buying my dongle. <laughs> that might be a different business. <laughs> but it's true really like like, fans. In order, yeah, exactly. You should start a dongle only fans. Just pictures of dongles in weird positions. And going into holes. But isn't it like saying that if you like in order to open water bottles now? you actually are going to need this specific opener. And then yeah. that business just becomes huge because you just need it. Apple's basically under the assumption for eternity, nothing's going to replace this. Which this Tim Cook's the eternity. IPhone. Tim Cook's Tim eternity. Cook's eternity. But Tim Cook said he didn't plan to stay, on Apple, to stay at Apple forever. Tim Cook has an exit plan. Okay. All these businesses make sense if nothing ever disrupts the iPhone. So the bet is... When will the iPhone get disrupted? So you, let's say tomorrow a phone came out, right? Yeah. That was amazing. How long would it take adoption? It, I mean, 25 yeah. years. Who would even? <laughs> 30 years. Because think about it. Apple like invented this 
space. And what are you going to no, do? No, BlackBerry was there. They just made I a know, better but, version of a smartphone. But they invented the like keyboardless smartphone with Look, this layout. I'm not claiming everyone... to have the answers of who's going to disrupt curious. it. Yeah. How I'm much money do you need to go Huawei. against Apple? I bet it'd be Huawei. Huawei. I, if I would TikTok. bet, you I would bet TikTok a Chinese Huawei. company because what That's they the only can... chance. What? That's the only chance. Yeah, because what at the, what you could do is just tax the shit out of iPhone yeah. so that no one in, in China can afford it. And then you have but, to... What would it take for you to buy a Pixel? Uh, a Google nothing. Pixel? And actually yeah. use a it? A TV commercial of them, me in the... You in the commercial. I'll, I'll be a Google Pixel. And they'd send you what's free the one. check on the commercial? <laughs> what? You have to be the commercial plus what's your fee? Um, fee would be low. I, I'm looking for the fame. A Google... <laughs> I'm looking for the fame. Yeah, but you have to do it the rest of your life. What's it on? TV? Super what, Bowl, during the Oscars? Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> okay. I want a Super Bowl you Google You should just have a TikTok commercial in between like... Uh, Addison Ray's post. That's the most views you're going to get. Because mm-hmm. in order to get to the next Addison Ray post, you have to see D on a Google commercial. Google Pixel. I and love which, my Google Pixel. <laughs> it's made my life so much easier. I'm just searching things all day. I haven't listened to music in five years. I don't know how to listen to a podcast. I can't find music. But when it rings, I know what button to push. <laughs> and guess what? When I want to search something, that thing is integrated that right into the phone. Ready. <laughs> Google Pixel. Get yours today. Now on to Addison. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I just don't know who could do it at this point. Like, it's like Samsung would tried. have to do. Yeah, like they would have to do something crazy. Like Google even, tried, Microsoft tried, uh, Nokia tried. Everything's been disrupted. Not, not Coca Cola. <laughs> What's that? Not Coca Cola. Not Coca Cola. I guess. I think I don't know. I think the conversation has become. I think there's a chance, and I agree with you. Like usually all the time on that topic. And I, I still do. But what I'm saying is like, maybe it's changed. Maybe it, the iPhone has too much of a, like it will take t- 10 years for something to possibly emerge. I think it's 10 years. I do believe, because let's say someone has the product today to get it to market, to get marketing, to get traction. You Because here's the thing, the first gener- purchase of this phone w- you need like the tastemaker crowd to do it is what iPhone effectively got. Yeah. So it'll be our second phone. And it'll also yeah. be the way they take their rake on the app store. They're in court right now with Epic Games over Fortnite. Yeah. Over what percentage and their monopoly. And if enough apps decide to leave in conjunction, that's how you get disruption. I'm not saying it's happening. I'm but just saying nowhere like, to go. They'd leave and crush their own business. That's my fear. Is yeah. I think that where they are innovating is they're locking you in slowly more and more and more and more. So if you left an iPhone today, you lose your iTunes, you lose your podcast app, you lose, you know what yeah. I mean? That's no, what I, I agree. I mean, I lose I all the, the passwords that I have stored on my, on yeah. my your whole life. This is your life. It's I, such an ease of use of this. That's why I'll never get distracted. I mean, I think they can't innovate this anymore right now. So what they're doing is they're like expanding everything it into else. your life deeper and deeper. Yeah, yeah like once, the password thing, that's a great point. Like it is when I got a, a new laptop, point. I was so nervous. I'm like, I don't know the password to shit. And but it's now all when you get a new different. laptop, it's like, do you want to sync from your old laptop? Yeah. yeah, you yes. have yes, yeah. and like, there's your life again. Yeah, exactly. It's so crazy. You, you can't never phone. leave. You, can, you, you can't literally leave. click one button on a brand new device, and it is like it's never been any different than the previous device you yes. had, other than the upgrades they made to it. Like, you can get your phone stolen, go get a new one, sync from iCloud. In an hour, this is the same phone. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Good. This is it it's just, no. I say 30 it plus might. years before there's even a slight competitor that could compete. Like, I agree with Anand's point that nothing nothing ever doesn't get disrupted, but it feels like it's become different than just a competition over phones, which yeah. is what we know it knew it as, right? Yeah. It was like the Palm Trail, the BlackBerry, the whatever. The casual $50 billion AirPod but, business. I mean, let's also— The dongles. The dongles are 20 Dude, we, They also did just like a slight like flex on everybody that really isn't talked about, but they came out with the new AirTags, which is not new technology. They took forever to come out with it. Mm-hmm. Tile has done it. And they've actually, right before they did it, allowed find my the app yeah except third party finders so they literally say open to everybody we don't give a fuck you'll still buy air tags yeah so you can go get a cheaper version it can still work with it same way air tags will but nobody's gonna buy them yeah because it'll be a flex out? to have an air tag oh air tags out yeah well i think you can pre-order I'm gonna start tagging sure. some stuff and just see what happens yeah. <laughs> they're only yeah. 29 bucks like 15 bucks or 29 26. Bucks you, get to you gotta tag go somewhere and leave it lose it Lose okay, it. I'm going to sound real sketchy right now, and, and I apologize, and I promise I will not use it for this case, but couldn't, like, if you were, like, a jealous 
you yeah. know, tag it on your girl. You can just tag up your, yes. your so significant other car, like yeah. put it under the. Yeah, so well, there's safety features that they've thought of, uh, and it'll notify you if there's an egg air tag that's not yours, and it can tell on your phone if there's one around you. Uh, it'll notify you and let you know that there's an air tag uh, detected near you that's not yours, and it'll warn you when you go onto your app that there's additional air tags near you, and so. That's where the returning comes in. If people has a, have a lost one, or if somebody's losing, yeah, I could just see that being a problem. I could just see, like, because yeah. you know how, like, some yeah. people won't like oh, yeah. share their location. With yeah, people. trust me. If you're trying to kidnap people and try to track them, you don't use fucking air tags. No, and no, I'm not, not talking about kidnapping. I'm talking about oh. jealous relationships. Yeah, that's where what I mean. You just like tag up their yeah, I mean, car, sure. and then you're like, "Yo, where are you at?" And yeah, like, liar. Yeah, right. around my tag. <laughs> I mean, maybe those people use air tags, but. You can pretty much already do that if anyone's shared their location with you. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying is with share your location, you have to choose to do that. You have to opt in. Right. But everyone forgets. Right. There's so many people who have like shared my sure. location with yeah. that I forget about. And then they're like, right, right, well, I want to get some tags. <laughs> I want to tags. But yeah, there is that safety feature. They that's good. So they're thinking that. of everything. Yep. Um let's talk about vaccines. Mm-hmm. Let's go out on that. I got an alert on my phone yesterday. That was like an emergency alert, like how you get like flash flood warnings. Yep. And it said, vaccinations are now available for everyone over 16, no reservations. Yeah. Let's that's, go, man. I mean, we're, but we're, is that's a only, bad sign. When I got that, sign. that means no it's one. It's like when Yeezys are yeah. easy to get. Like when you just show up and that's ah, size 11 and a half. No yeah. one wants them. <laughs> I don't want it then. You're right. I want that StockX vaccine. Yeah. I want it if nobody can have it. Yeah. Yeah. I want that off-white yeah. vaccine. AstraZeneca available for everybody. By Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, so, so what's going on? I mean, do you think we've kind of peaked? Yeah, yeah. We're way beyond peak of vaccinations. Um, so if you're getting it, you got it. If you're not, you're, it's over. Biden came out and said by July 4th, he wants 70% of adults. What are we at right now? Does anyone know? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't even think we're at half. No, we're definitely 40. not at half. Yeah. We were at 30-something percent a what few weeks do? ago. We're, look, we're marketing, guys. What do you do at this point? I think they— How do you get from 40 to 70? I, th- I mean, I think it, it has to be uh, working with big employers, travel tourism boards, you know, all those types of things. But Florida came out. Now, Florida, all restrictions are completely removed in Florida. And they he banned vaccine passports. Banned them. There was a- like, what is the point of that? Like, I get—let everything go, but like— some businesses may want people to have. My mom got a vaccine passport from Healthvana, which yeah. is our friend Ramen's company. I'm gonna have Ramen come on the podcast. Oh, it's an actual thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I thought vaccine passport was just like a reference to that little piece of paper you get. No, but there's a digital one that some people have. Uh, so, like, 32 percent of the population is vaccinated. We're nowhere close to 70. No chance by July 4th. No chance. No chance. Now with everything opening up, and if everyone's not. I've only seen one place on my friend's story. He went to like a big concert where they had a vaccine like check-in. No one is requiring you to yeah. prove it. The only way is to have private enterprise join the fight and require it. Whether you go to a restaurant, whether you go to a club, whether you go to a concert, Employers, a sporting think, event. Which yeah. won't happen because those people are also hungry just to get business back. Business is now back. You're not going to restrict. Yeah. You know, like if they're like 100% capacity, you've been dying for the last year and a half on your business. You're not going to be like, well, wait a minute. Let me see. If I want and to- if you think about it, the variant is apparently the current Pfizer and Moderna vaccines can defend against it. Yeah. All the variants that we're seeing. What about J&J? I, don't, I can't speak to <laughs> No <J&J>. promises. <laughs> <laughs> so my point is, you have… We don't even know what we gave you. We don't know what it is. You don't know if your blood flows properly. We're not sure. So if only 30% of the adult population is vaccinated, yeah. that means 68% are still at great risk if these variants come. Because while the death rate of the current COVID-19 virus that we've dealt with in the U.S. for the last year has proven to be not as fatal as we had once thought. Yeah. And it was very vulnerable populations that were just ravaged. Yeah. The variants seem to be a different beast. Yeah. Because Mr. Beast. You have <laughs> 20,000 people is what the estimation a day dying in India. Even though the recorded cases is like 3,000. They're dealing with a variant there? They're dealing with like multiple double, variants. Double mutant. Got it. Oh yeah, that's the double mutant. I can't tell which way this goes. Like, do, do, can it mutate enough to drag us all back into hell? Can do, Does it just r- run its course and we get a herd immunity type thing and, okay, all good? 
So it says forty four percent have got at least one shot. Okay, thirty two percent is fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated. Because he wants the math is one hundred and six of two hundred forty seven million adults. His goal is seventy percent of adults having one shot. So either way, still if the number is forty four of one. My fear is we're just in a mirage that we're okay. Yeah, yeah, I think you might be. And right. I'm not trying to do the liberal. Let's lock everything down. It's just looking at what's going on in the rest of the world, looking at travel opening, looking at people yeah. who aren't vaccinated that think they're immune because the U.S. is open. So they get on a flight and they go to God knows where yeah. and come back with... California is pretty highly high percentage. What's California? They said 31 million doses have been delivered in California. I don't know how 12. many... 12.6 million have been fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated. So still 32%. But, but how many people That's- got one dose? 31 million doses given, so assume half is one, right? Doses because it could be… Yeah, so… Or maybe three quarters is one and… So what do you think? Half the population then? No, it's just 32%. But that's fully fully vaccinated. But how many people… Sure, probably half. So it's a little bit better. Probably 40. Yeah, I don't know, man. I can't can't call it. I know the 70%. I don't think so. By July 4th? No chance. And and not only… It's it's over. Forget the vaccination. It's the travel… Like, let's focus on travel. Yeah. Travel? Travel? What are you talking about? Everything's fine. Middle seats So are we just open. banned flights from India as of May 4th. Yep. Which today. was today. The real question to me always is, why announce like seven days in advance you're banning till May 4th? That just means you're going to have a flood of people that are bringing the variant. So, yeah. I, yeah. Because it's not. I've talked to multiple. Even my mom was like, "They should have banned it seven days ago." Yeah, but for diplomatic <laughs> reasons, I think you just have to. You have to. It's a courtesy you give the well, country. Fuck being diplomatic in these times. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's what fucked us in the first place. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Close those borders. Lock them down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's wrap it up with uh, what we've seen on social media in the last week that everyone needs to know about. D. I got a big one. What do you got? Nineteen years of five four. Wow. Today's the f- well, congratulations. 19th anniversary of 5-4. Uh, Gosh. 5-4 can buy cigarettes. 5-4 is <laughs> off to college. <laughs> yeah, both. Five, four it can, can do vote. ketamine, but it's illegally <laughs> still. Well, experimental. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, when's the actual… Today, May 4th. Wow. So, you know, we, we kind of… Um, oh, yeah. What am I saying? 5-4 day. Are you guys doing a thing? Yeah. So, we have a big sale. Um, head over to themenlowhouse.com. We have a huge sale with all of our best-selling items. And then you can join the club. There's a great offer for $20, $25, $29. Depending on your budget, there's all kinds of great offers. But go sign up. Support. Um, we have incredible deals right now. But we also are giving away a 19th year anniversary NFT. On Open C, so I we didn't want to it. sell it. We wanted to. Uh, so you give it to one person. That's give it to one person. What is it? Um, the original it's, it's drawing like, of the logo. No, no, that's not a bad idea though. That'd but it was literally a nineteenth. Um, like we created a art piece for nineteen years, nice. and that's what we're giving away. So we'll give it to one lucky person. Um, but yeah, nineteen years. Wow, long ass time. That's no joke. Yeah, it's wild. You I, made it through all sorts of. Yeah. Recessions and. Pan- global pandemics. Imagine when 5-4 is like 50 years old and it's like, we've lived through three wars, two pandemics. You know? 17 diseases. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I'll, I, I, I'll kind of like share my, because I, I, I was thinking about over the weekend, like in this era, young people do not have that feeling of like commitment. They have to do something for a long period of time. Like yeah. that's very much our parents' generation. I mean, even Bill Gates doesn't have that feeling. Yeah, anymore. exactly. 27 <laughs> years. He's like, Fuck. <laughs> and so, you know, and I don't feel like I did it because I'm like some, you know, I don't know, loyalist or something like that. But mine has been really like, obviously I enjoyed what I do. Mm-hmm. I think it's an incredibly rewarding experience and it's fun. And I've got to meet an amazing amount of people. But like, it is like, it's crazy when you start a business, like the attachment you have to it. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to like, you know, think what does life look like without that business? And I know a lot of people sell their businesses and a lot of people move on. And mm-hmm. I've talked to, you know, I was talking to our buddy Angelo who sold his 
DeviantArt business to Wix. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's same. He started DeviantArt when I started 5.4. Yeah. And, you know, he sold it a few years ago and he goes and works with that company today. But like, just like, you just become attached to these things and it's yeah. very, very hard to... And it becomes your identity. Yeah, it's your identity. Like there were so many... We were the 5'4 guys. That's like people actually know us like that. Yeah. So it's hard to uh, imagine a life without it. But man, 19 years, so the the book will be epic one day because the stories are insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 54 years of 5'4 put out the book. <laughs> put out the book. Yeah. 50, that's what? 30 more, 36 yeah. more years. Yeah. 35 more years. Doing the run club. Yeah. You can just only make it like <laughs> half a mile. Dom's pushing me in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. Well, everyone go check that out. Yeah. Where's that? Menlo. The MenloHouse.com. The MenloHouse.com. Okay. Anna, what about you? I saw while we're recording the pod, Vlad's at it again. Robin Hood experienced outages when Doge hit. An old time high of 60 cents. And Anthony liked to rub it in that they're the number one app in the app store. And I'm going to tell you why. They're the only place you can buy freaking Doge yeah. easily. It's the entire boring. company's based on one coin. Who's What's tr- going to happen? So they're going public next month. Are they going to be forced to disclose? Knowing how Wall Street and regulators don't give a shit. Yeah. Is anyone going to ask, what's your volume on Doge versus what's your volume on public? It'll be the Doge? same thing that happened on all that press run. He'll just... Dodge, doge it. Yeah. And no one can, you can't go the next level deep. And you know, Congress, and they're not going to. Yeah, if you get doge a wrench, you can doge a ball. How does Google work here? (laughs) Yeah. The only reason it's the number one app in the app store is because of Dogecoin. That's it. No one's trading stocks on Robinhood anymore. Think about how many people have (laughs) lost interest in all the meme stocks because Doge is on fire. I literally don't even look at stock prices anymore because I'm so obsessed with just seeing what's happening with these random coins. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's causing the tech sell-off. Tech's been sold off the NASDAQ the last three days. Everyone's, Everyone's cycling Doge. through <laughs> yeah. high-grade yeah. tech into Doge. Yeah. I mean, at $40 billion, you said... $40 billion traded in the last 24 hours on Doge. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, Datadog and Snowflake people are selling. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's very true. Yeah, man. Fucking Vlad. I don't know. It's just annoying that every time, I mean, this is like now the third or fourth time that this has happened. Yeah. I also want to know how regulators aren't like, okay, why are you onboarding Doge? Mm-hmm. I just don't, they don't even know to ask that stuff, right? Like, like what what's is a Doge? Doge? Yeah, they don't know what a Doge is. Why? They're buying it too. Yeah, they're like, I don't know. AOC told me to buy it. I went <laughs> on the beach last week. <laughs> just give me a tip. Because Coinbase actually, he gets so Mitch McConnell mad. and AOC so just no, hanging out buying Doge. No, she did. No, because be I know easy. Coinbase has like a pretty rigorous process when they onboard tokens. Yeah. And is Do- Doge, Doge is, is not on there. Probably for a reason. Because it's funny. No, because they're just scared of how real it is. All right. Well, and then there's, and you can then tell Pete. Your Coinbase founder, I'd like a word with him. <laughs> me and the Doge Army. You can't get through his security, trust me. It's <laughs> fine. I just need to have a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Who meets in person anymore? Yeah, that's I true. I don't need that. that just hop Doge on Zoom. billionaires. Okay, uh, my, oh, you know what mine is? is I saw a No Jumper post, uh, you know, Adam22. They apparently caught the guys who robbed uh, Lady Gaga's dog walker. I heard. And uh, they were gang members from L.A. Wow. Um, How did they know that was Lady Gaga's dog? I'll tell Oh, I don't think they knew it was Lady Gaga's dog as much as they... Frenchies are just hot. Oh, okay. They just saw they saw a lick walking down the street and <laughs> yeah. said, three of these things? You shouldn't be? Um, and uh, the guy, like, the guy they shot, like, had to have parts of his lung removed because yeah, his well. lung collapsed and stuff. Um, so it's attempted murder. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, yeah, I would assume. But guess how they fucking caught him? Oh. Air tag. We called it. I wish it was air tag. <laughs> we called it because the woman who found them yeah. strapped to a pole and uh, uh, t- took him into the police to collect the reward. Yeah. Was like dating one of the dudes. <laughs> it's not, you could have got a little bit more removed. So the person that caught the reward turned in. No, so here's no, what happened. Never she, got said, the reward. she said, I found the dogs tied to a pole in this random alley. Here they are. I heard there's some sort of right. reward. And the cops said, This is fishy and told Gaga, Don't pay her. This is fishy. We got to look this up. And they tracked it all the way back. And that led them to these guys because she's like dating one of the dude, one of the suspects. No. So anyway, just some little news, a little check-in on the West Hollywood bubble crime spree. I thought you had another scene on social. Big in the political space. 
He came in oh, hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're right. That's yeah. seen on social. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that, you know, there's, it's been heating up. Um, the, the, the gubernatorial issue, race. The gubernatorial race. <laughs> um, with, so it's because there's a recall that's official. So there will be a recall election. So in Gavin Newsom California. Has, in California. has been recalled. There will be a recall election. Um, and so a lot of people are starting to throw their, their hat in the ring. One in particular is Miss Caitlyn Jenner. Which, uh, uh, from what we hear, you are now supporting. So here's the funny thing. At first, I was like, ah, come on, Caitlin. Like, you're famous. You're whatever. Do you really need more publicity? Yes, she does. And she deserves it. And she has my vote. <laughs> she put out a trailer video and it is hot, hot, hot. Okay. So, and her original dream was to take over the sports world and be the best runner in history. And now she has a bigger calling and it's to save California. I mean, the video is fire. I gave you that. The video is fire. I'm telling you, you got that uh, keeping up with the Kardashian staff to help <laughs> yeah. you whip up a hot trailer. Um, I'm curious if any of the family will uh, uh, weigh in. You yeah, got like to, support, man. Right? You got to team up on this one. You kind of brushed Caitlyn aside, I feel like. It's time to bring her back in. If they don't support her, she has no shot. Because then it's like your own family doesn't support you. Then you. The way these elections are won in California specifically. Yeah. You have to go to the teachers union and get their vote. You don't the think Kylie, Jen- Jen- Kylie Jenner shows up at the teachers union? Yeah. They're voting. The go to police, clubs. Kim. Yeah. Look what I'm doing for prison reform. Look at my butt. Yeah. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Kylie, <laughs> just say man. Think Kylie could it. get the vote out. Think about it. I think this is what's going to happen. Don't forget we are the land of the governor. Yeah. And I think we're back and I'm in it for the pure fuckery of it all. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I believe she's probably a Republican. Yeah, she definitely she was. She definitely pre- means right. You know what's good for breaking down barriers and walls between groups? A trans Republican. <laughs> yeah. Bam. And what's Unity. interesting about the video is her voice is still pretty deep. What happened? Nothing. I'm just reading through something that we'll get to later. Okay. What? Jesus. Jeez. What? Tim, what? Yeah, I thought someone died. I know. I was like, what did I say? I can't say trans Republican. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay. It's just Satoshi's shout out. It was brutal. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I, uh, you know, hot trailer vid. Um, look, I think we're probably going to see a couple more crazy. I think uh, they're joking on the All In podcast about David Sachs running. They were joking about Chamath running. You know, those guys aren't running. They're not running. They're too busy. The lives will be over. I mean, why would you do that? Skeletons will all come out. All that scrutiny. Um, I'm into it. So, everyone, check out the trailer. It's on social. Who's the most unique person that's going to throw their hat in? Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, you're getting a better one than that. Get more unique. I think we went straight to the the uniqueness. The first yeah. person. First person. Yeah. Just set the. It's kind of. Yep. Well, yeah. Okay. So I think it wins because you don't even look. Name me one other person who's running. This uh-huh. is a smart, informed group of people. The voters? For that reason alone. No. Moth never showed up. I'm saying for that reason alone, <laughs> that's you're going to win. Most famous wins in 2021. We talked about it. Yeah, I agree. Unless Logan Paul throws his hat in the ring after he I'll vote for throws him, his man. hat in the other ring. I, I'd vote for Logan. If he beats Floyd Mayweather, yeah. team will be his for, campaign manager. I'd vote for Logan over I will Caitlin. go take six months off and make sure he's the next governor of California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good thing you only need two post the fight. <laughs> yeah. That'd be, be quick and easy. Yeah. It's a couple posts. Yeah. And if he beats Floyd, he should literally just announce at the end. And by the way, I'm now governor of California. <laughs> <laughs> and Nevada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it. Let's get to shout outs. Um, I have one, but real quick, wanted to give feedback. Did you see that Trump and Jake Paul recently FaceTime? Wow. There's no a, like way. a screenshot going around. Yeah, on Twitter or not. They had a FaceTime recently. <laughs> <laughs> you want to congratulate That's got to be a fake. I've seen on social. That's my idea. Congratulate him for the fight. Yeah. Drake congratulated him, apparently. Yeah. And there's there's rumors that he signed to Ovio. Don't know what that fucking means. Also a rumor, but... Well, they just know how to stir that up. Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, Trump, Paul, 2024. I'm got my vote. <laughs> With Caitlyn Jenner as our governor. I mean, listen, I'm just saying Dude, it might come be Come on. Yeah. America. And Doge is our current <laughs> Cur- currency. The <laughs> <laughs> way the direction this country's moving. Can you imagine? That's talking about the inmates running the asylum. There you, go. <laughs> there you got Pete rocking around here with 50 mil in his back pocket. Yep. Why don't I just buy, go ahead and buy 5-4, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good stuff. Um, yes, uh, and then I have a shout-out. So we'll start with… Uh, we have long shout-outs? I might have to go. No. No, we just have two. How long is Satoshi? Um, so, uh, okay, go quick. 
Okay, we have uh, from Fallen Kaiser. He wants to give a big old shout out. I missed this one the last episode because we got a new website, group-chat.com. We are now live on there. No more wow. Mail Street Journal. So I missed the shout out because it came through a little different. The last ones, but don't worry. No more misses. Oh, so that's the reason. Yeah, yeah. Got this it. time around, this is the reason. Got it. Got uh, so he wants to give a big birthday shout out. This one goes out to Ken Fry, who doesn't miss an episode of Group Chat. It's been a tough year uh, with COVID, but he's preserved uh, and is making things happen. I'm super proud of you and excited for your next endeavor. Happy birthday. I love you. Fallen. Uh, Ken got me hooked Happy on birthday. Group Chat. I appreciate it, how informative and funny it is. Keep it up. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, man. man. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Woo. And then we got a shout out from Fraction Bronson. Okay, that one's cut. Okay. Um, <laughs> happy birthday. Sorry, Sister. She got cut. <laughs> you got cut. Good try, bro. Um, okay, that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We will see you on what's today? Tuesday. We'll see you on Thursday.